Hello then, welcome to the World News at 12 on Voice of the People, 90.3 FM. My name is Esther Wachuku and these are the top stories. President Tinubu's government proposes to sell three presidential jets. Bishop Koka speaks on corruption in Nigeria. Labour Party crisis depends as Peter Obi Domsaburi backs moves to salvage party. And... People's Democratic Party will tax a Mawili led assembly for threatening to impeach Fubara. Details now. The world news begins with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's led government set to sell three jets in the presidential air fleet. VOP News gathered that the proposed sale of the presidential jet was part of the cost-saving measures being adopted by the Tinubu administration. The fleet currently has 10 aircraft, which includes six jets and four helicopters, which would be reduced to seven if the planned action is successful. The plans in the presidential fleet are Boeing Business Jets BBJ-737, Goldstream G-55, Goldstream G-500, 2-Falcom-7X, HS-4000, 2-Augusto-139, and 2-Augusto-101. The BBJ-737 is an Argent Air Force One, which is used exclusively by the president and is designed to serve as an office and residential quarter and air to enable the president function effectively during his trip. The president also uses one of the helicopters for shuttles during his trips around the country. In October 2016, a dissolved Falcon 7X executive jet and Beechcraft Hawker 4000 business jet were put up for sale, but the proposed sale fell through. The preferred bidders, who initially agreed to pay $24 million for the two aircraft, later reduced their offer to $11 million, which the Bahamut Buhari led government rejected. Meanwhile, Catholic Bishop of Sakota Diocese Matthew Kuka has accused Nigerian leaders of leaving large at the expense of the citizens. Kuka in his Easter message to Nigerians on Sunday, lamented that over the past 60 years of the country's existence, Nigeria's leaders have looked like men in a drunken stupor, staggering, stumbling and fumbling, slurring in speech with blurred vision, searching for the way home. Despite the negatives and challenges, the cleric, however, said Nigeria could be great again if the leaders and followers would join hands and do the needful. The bishop, as a way forward, urged the government to come up with urgent steps to put the nation on the path of healing and earn the immoral culture of nepotism. Kuka argued that the situation where the Nigerian military is the one overseeing the nation's internal security is not acceptable both on the country and the professionalism of the military personnel. He also lamented the huge monetary allocation to the military without corresponding resources in the fight against insecurity and called for professional recruitment into the military. Elsewhere, the Labour Party's presidential candidate in the 2023 general election, Peter Obi, may have donned the embattled national chairman, Julius Aburi, and backed moves to salvage the party. Peter Obi described the Inewi convention conducted by the party's National Working Committee in uncomplimentary terms. Obi said Aburi and other leaders should have consulted more widely on his absence at the national convention. Peter Obi, who spoke during an ex-space session hosted by Power of Facts on Friday, said the time had now come for Aburi and the party's leadership to do the right thing to salvage it. Director General of the presidential campaign team in the 2023 general poll, Aki Oshintoku, in his reaction to the Labour Party crisis at the weekend, described the Newe Convention as kangaroo and the reserved 2027 presidential ticket for Obi as a Greek gift beyond the powers of the Aburi led National Committee to give. According to Oshintoku, unquote, what we are likely to have now is three factions of the party, the Aburi faction, the Akpapa faction, and the genuine one with substantial stakeholders that aligns with the visions of Obi and obedience, end quote. Now, 
Now, the River State Chapter of the People's Democratic Party has described the Martin Amawala-led 27 Rivers House of Assembly members as illegal following threats to impeach Governor Simfuba. The State Chapter of the Party asked the Assembly to allow the courts to determine their status following their defection from PDP to APC. The Martin Amawali led 27 lawmakers who are loyalists of Inge Sumwiki, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, have threatened to impeach Fubara over his refusal to implement an eight-point peace accord signed with Wiki on the orders of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The State Assembly also accused Fubara of not funding the Rivers Independent Electoral Commission to conduct elections for local government councils in the state. Reacting, the State Publicity Secretary of the PDP, Sidney Tambari Barra, charged the state lawmakers to stop the stubborn the peace of the state. Mara urged the lawmakers to address their legitimacy questions in the light of Section 109 of the Constitution of Nigeria 1999 as amended. Also, he stated further, and I quote, several cases querying your legality in courts. Why are you running away from them? You are constituting a public nuisance, engaging in illegal assembly, taking illegal decisions, and making illegal laws, knowing full well that you no longer represent your constituents. End quote. You're currently listening to the World News at 12 and Voice of the People, 90.3 FM. We'll take a short break when we return more news. Welcome back. You're currently listening to the World News and Voice of the People at 90.3 FM. In more news reports, Nigeria's Minister of Works, David Omahi, has claimed that God told him specifically that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's administration would last for eight years. VOP News recalls that Tinubu, a former governor of Lagos State, was sworn in as Nigeria's president on May 20, 29, 2023, and is currently serving his first year of a four year term. With barely a year in office, Umayi, who previously served as a governor of Ebonyi State, remains hopeful about President Tinubu's prospects for re-election when Nigerians cast their votes in 2027, which is more than three years from the present time. During a recent interview in a monitored television program, Umayi asserted that it was God who brought Tinubu to power and he, that is God, has assured him that the incumbent administration born of God will last eight years. Umayi said, and I quote, you must know that the coming on board of Mr. President is divine. When God starts a thing, he completes it. End quote. And now to a news analysis segment, I actually have joining me via the telephone to shed more light or give us a perspective on the issues, or rather the stories I've read out on the World News at 12. It's actually Barrister Darlington. Barrister Darlington is a political and social affairs commentator, and he'll be helping to give us an objective view on some of the questions I'll be throwing at him concerning some of the stories I've just read. Barrister Darlington, good afternoon. Happy Easter to you. Hi, uh, uh, good afternoon and happy Easter. I, I, I do hope that you enjoyed yourself yesterday and you, you fried fish and, you know, you got yourself satisfied. Resting on open. Why fish? Why did you say fish? Why don't you, why didn't you say chicken? <laughs> <laughs> All right. But... <laughs> In as much as a country okay. is experienced in the holiday mood, not just a country, the world over, especially for Christian faithfuls, things are going on in the polity, right? And we must talk about them. Now, let's talk about mm. David Umahi prophesying that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is ordained to rule the country for eight years. The president has barely completed one year in his four-year tenure, and we've seen a lot of the issues that have transpired in the course of his administration since he assumed office. Now, David Umahi is saying that God told him over the night that the president will be the president for eight years we don't even know how 2027 will be what do you take on david umar his prophecy this is the clear statement of a sacrifice i am telling you every other person who have made this type of statement they are psychopaths they just want to massage the ego of a tinubu you don't know what will happen tomorrow next year or even 2027 not to talk of eight years you can imagine how people this is how they drive leaders eh, into unnecessary controversy 
Now, with this type of statement, you know, we will not be talking of uh, second term when he has not finished first term. Can you imagine? Just because he has been appointed as work, uh, Minister of uh, Work Service, so he can just be, he is not God. Why he has become God to predict what will happen? You can imagine, nobody will record with Nigerian people who are the actual voters. Is it not the people of Nigeria that will decide whether Tribu will run again or not? As I have always told you, don't have politicians. I am telling you, in the Western world, you don't do this, you don't make this type of statement. Eh? Who told you that it's going to last for it? Who told you? How did you know? Are you the Nigerian people? He said God told him. About, uh, why did he become a prophet? That's why I asked you. I did not church. That what, what eh? you, that's what I'm asking you. That what do you think about his prophecy? Is that God told no, him? No, no, no. Let me be in the in the Istanbul. Omar he is he has a lot of chicken. He's in Istanbul. So Barista Darling, are you saying you're not confident in what David Omar he said he saw? God spoke to him. What are you what are you saying? Who is confident about even the first time, not to talk of second time? Who? No, I'm just saying even that, are, you not, are you not giving that certainty that God could speak through him? He, he came out to clarify that God spoke to him. No, 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 no. Uh, God is not the author of confusion now. What are you saying? Telling me that uh, the way Tribu came into office was divine. Uh, what, what type of... Look, people do not annoy us. Mm. Oh, is it because I let it play the, that uh, ignoble role, Abi? Is, can you just imagine? You mean what I let it did was uh, the, the, the position of God concerning the, the election that brought into power? All the, all the, all the embarrassing uh, issues that came from CHU. You mean God approved it? Why is it that nobody is talking about all these things for God's sake? A president is talking about the here on several occasions. You said what? We've been talking about this here on several occasions. I'm just saying that him predicting or giving that certainty or the prophecy. That is what I'm saying. Why didn't he, what, what, why didn't he put all those things into context before telling us what God said? Are you telling me that God will love, he will love such a thing? Hold on. Are you telling me that God will love certificate forgery and fraud? Is that what the woman is telling me? Please, you should keep quiet though. You should, you should keep quiet. You are fucked on. Barista Darlington, let's, yes. let's, let's try to be factual without the whole sentimental ish. The president has, uh, you know, his supporters, whether we like it or not. Based on the calculations from the 2023 elections, he won. Where he got more of the support from, it's not what is in context at the moment. What is what is on ground is the fact that he has won. David Omahe is seven within his administration. So do you think it's psychophancy for him to always want to show that support? To always want to clarify his stance and say that I have, he got it I have you. Okay. Omahe cannot make such a statement if he's true to himself. That statement is come from a man who is a psychopath. We just want to matter the ego of you with nothing else. Okay. If he's saying that he's God, I am telling you why that, that statement should not come up. Why did they bring God into this matter? That is my annoyance here. Okay. Ah, we saw the blasting uh, soldiers that came out of Tinubu uh, and his uh, soldiers in the U.S. Somebody is telling me that God is a God. Is Which one is God? Is a, you mean God can impose such a person on Nigerians? Hold on, is that how God will run his own affair? Please, people should be very careful before God will get angry with them. Ah, Barista if you have enjoyed the Easter now, and uh, keep quiet. Mr. Darlington, by Nanoga, the president's spokesman said that there are persons, or will, will I say, he said, political opponents or individuals who are bent on ensuring that the administration of President Tinubu is sabotaged. According to him, mm. most of the problems being experienced a sporadic increase in insecurity, uh, the economic hardship, uh, the criticism that this administration is experiencing are all the handiworks of those who intend to sabotage President Tinubu's administration. He also clarified during a particular podcast with one of the uh, major presenters on a particular television station, he asserted, or rather affirmed, that the president listens and that he understands the body language of the people. But that there are individuals who are bent on ensuring that his administration becomes infamous. What's your take on on Bayon Anonga's statement? We have been saying this. This is a big deal. Whenever they run into a big shark, 
they will tell us somebody somewhere sabotaging the government. Meanwhile, the government is the country sabotaging itself. Elsa, nobody is sabotaging the whole government. Rather, APC is sabotaging APC. All the policies that should be brought up, which of them have seen the light of day? Tell me, was it the people that are asking to put up policies that are working against the government? Everything about why are not going to come out the people. Those people, they don't have them, they don't have this. Hold on, no. those people, he keeps saying this repeatedly. Yes, we know that they are the men. Eh? Instead of them to blame the state, they are looking for somebody to blame. All the policies that brought us here in Africa, was it not even for policy? Was it the policy of the so-called uh, sabotage? Eh? And what happened to the state of sabotage? Somebody is uh, betraying a whole federal government, and they made the question, and they have seen it, and they know how to sabotage the government, yet they kept quiet. Only for him to make a statement. We are tired of such things, so we are tired. If Tunubu is true to himself, why would he appoint for state ministers and the brought up the 50, 50 economic uh, coordination council? Eh? That means as a minister, I have lost my job. I have lost my, if I'm a minister, I will resign. Right, because Professor these people are taking over the job. We, well, I have other questions to ask you. Let's go on to... So why are you telling me that somebody is attacking them? Let's go on to Peter Obi and the Labour Party and of course the obedient... Uh, recently, there was a Twitter space hangout with Peter B and his supporters. In that hangout, a lot of questions were asked by his supporters on his political ambition ahead of 2027 and, of course, his stake on the situation going on in the Labour Party. Peter B said that he is not going anywhere and that he's not an anti-party agent. He remains a loyalist of the Labour Party. However, when questions were asked about 2027, he said at the moment that should not be the conversation. The conversation should be about how they could enact change and put in structure, right? Now, a lot of people feel that the obedient movement are the ones who may actually be the drawback for Peter Obi, despite the kind of overwhelming support they've been able to show. With what is going on within the Labour Party, Peter Obi is so tough made it obvious that the obedience are basically his major supporters. So, do we see a future whereby Peter Obi may leave the Labour Party, even if he has affirmed he is not leaving, but focusing more on his supporters? No, he cannot leave the Labour Party. Peter Obi should not leave. That means he has surrendered to Sabotoas. He has surrendered to Fritz Communists. He has surrendered to APC. And they are sponsoring a gang up. They should not leave the Labour Party. They will get tired. Rather, they should not to him. They will surrender to him. At the end of the day, this thing will be there. All right. They will get tired. Okay. People okay. should not leave the Labour Party. Yes. Okay. Rather, he should take a stand. He should okay. take a stand on what is going on in the Labour Party. Okay. And then go to that party. Yes. He should take a stand. He okay. should not leave this party now to all, all manner of uh, characters. Okay. All right, Barrister Darlington, I want you to listen to this appropriately so you can tell me what your response would be. Feeling-based Biafra agitator, right? Simon Ekba says he is planning his defense against two suicide bombers allegedly sent to neutralize him in the European country. Ekba, who claimed the suicide bombers are sent by the federal government of Nigeria, said he escaped the same situation last year. He insisted that Biafra declaration will be on the 2nd of December 2024, the Biafra agitator submitted that no amount of threat will stop it. However, Ekba acknowledged his fighters' decision to resort to what they described as a spiritual battle against the federal government of Nigeria. Ekba's fighters had in two separate videos vowed to start a spiritual warfare for Biafra's independence after their attack on security personnel. Now, there was a video that showed the moment they rent out the forest with live chickens and it trended online last week, Wednesday. He's actually saying, according to him, that there will continue to be a liberation for Biafra. And a few days ago, Tiger, who is known as a notorious member and fighter of IPOP, resurfaced in a video showing the moment he attacked men of the Nigerian army on the order of Simon Eber. Barrister... Uh, uh, Darlington, do you think Simon Ekbar is on the right path with most of these proclamations he's making? Uh, Elsa, do you know that the federal government is the cause of this agitation in the South East? 
Kindly explain. The federal government is the, is the problem of, of the factories and nothing else. And uh, imagine if the federal government people who are ready to afford this to come. What is your problem? Eh? You saw how the federal government has been pampering terrorism in the, in the north. And you said that if you are part of the army, what is your problem? You refuse, rather, you deploy army. You deploy army to go and kill all of them. And you think they will not suck them up? No, they will not do. The federal government is the problem in the party. I'm saying it here now. If they can call other people for a round table discussion, even pamper them, give them what they want. Why can't you call them who are self determination group? Eh? You know what they don't want them in Nigeria. That's why they want to leave. The federal government of Nigeria has marginalized the South East for a long time. That is why these boys are busy now. And they are not even making effort to talk to a let us talk. Eh? How can you solve the problem like that? But, but Barrister Darlington, a lot of critics say that uh, Simon Epper is not helping the situation, especially for young boys who are residing in the southeast, a couple of them who are not going to school, who are literally redundant or at home, are being brainwashed into joining this movement. And of course, we've been seeing videos recently of the Nigerian army flushing out most of the enclaves where they think some IPOP insurgents, you know, actually reside in. We even saw pictures of shallow graves where they were able to dig out bodies of dead persons who were kidnapped along the road. So the question now, Barrister Darlington, is this. In, re in regards to the situation with Simon Elba, do you think that most of the statements he's making and causing confusion, supposedly, is what is distorting the peace in the South East and maybe making those young boys feel that joining this particular group is the only alternative they have to properly exist? What, what do you think? It is, the, uh, it is the attitude of the federal government. They don't have any regard for the South East. The only go that to make speeches during the election. Esther, they have not recognized the evil man since after the war. That is what is causing me for the nothingness. Look at how one man the car is being treated. All people who have done war things in Nigeria, look at how they were treated. Now look at it, just suppose you can see whether it is fair. These are the things that are causing problem in the South East. If you are treated or tell me in your father's house, will you be happy? Tell me. Go and check. All these other regions, how many of them have contributed more than the Igbo in Nigeria? How many of them? All these other regions. You know what the parties are contributing in Nigeria. Yes. Whatever anything has to do with them. The federal government just kill on one channel. Eh? You yeah, have not kept that the kind of inside prison for this long. This young man has said, leave me, let me go and stop what is going on there, they refuse. That's that they refuse. But you saw how many people have released in the, in the north. For what? They've released and they've integrated. Eh? Why can't they release man the down? The man that told them that we see we eat the three in today. Everything is inside is concerning security will stop. Yeah, because I'm gonna want to listen. But you saw how they crowd the a terrorist in the in Zapana. They crowned him. The propaganda is in Zafara. Government officials went their head back. Eh? And you are telling me that they should be happy in the South East. What for? Tell me what for? Why did they not make the do and say that they are not done what in the North? Mention it. So, whatever is going on in the, in the South East, the federal government should be held responsible. They are the ones who are in the country in the, in the South East. And why should they deploy military and everybody there to be killing, killing our young men? Meanwhile, in the north, they are, look at what is going on. And when they arrest them, they are integrated into the society. They do pamper them. Even the terrorists are protesting that the good they get them is not uh, up to standard. And meanwhile, a state determination group, you let them. They are not talking to them. You are like you deploy army. How do you think you are, you, are, you are going to solve the problem through that means? Well, Barrister Darlington, so is, it it possible, is it possible, according to Simon Ekpa's allegation, that they sent suicide bombers to him all the way at, at Finland? That they sent suicide bombers? Is, it, is that actually, is that a reality that the federal government can actually take upon themselves? At uh, this time where most of the resources in terms of having to awaken the Nigerian economy is what is needed. Will the federal government go to that length for one individual? Uh, I don't know what you 
Is it because there is weak blackout in the southeast? They are don't want to just that they don't want the press to report what is going on there. They don't want the press to report it. Especially in Nimo State, where Opus Zadema is the governor. I don't know whether Opus Zadema is presiding over the graveyard of Nimo people. Or is presiding, is presiding over the living people of Nimo State. Eh? Go no, and see what is going on there. So they are don't want to so they are don't want to it's just that the time to come. The United Nations will throw what has been going on in this country, the social in Nemo State. They will throw it. Whether they like it or not, the ICC are taking note. At the end of the day, they will tell us what in the the cargo or any other person the fact that have done against the federal government. They will tell us. Look at people who have killed one South and entire village in the north. Here is the entire village. They are even for occupied people's homeland. They are even up the federal government is aware of these people. They are aware that some people, we don't know where they came from. They are occupying villages in Denver and their places. The federal government did not see anything wrong with that. They did not. That's why they did not. But once over the top in the market, they will, they will rise up. You don't have to run the government. Barrister Darlington, finally, before I let you go, right? Uh, the Catholic Bishop of Sacramento Diocese, Marthi Kuka, he has described Nigeria's past and present leaders as men in a drunken stupor who stumble and fumble while searching for the way home. According to him, he said, leaders in the past and the present have refused to provide a template that would direct Nigeria in the right direction. Rather, they've leveraged on the resources of Nigeria, taking it all for themselves and living the country in the current state it is. And according to him, corruption has become the fabric for the very existence of this country. However, he's making a statement to the, to the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to do something in terms of stopping the cancer, destroying the vital organs of the country. And he made reference to the disparity you mentioned about certain individuals giving reprieve and certain individuals not giving the same template to possibly reintegrate themselves. What would you say with what Mati Kuka described the government as? <coughs> yes, sir, that is a fact. Corruption, corruption, corruption. That is the death of Nigeria. I have told you, successful leaders, they only come to plunder Nigeria, not to rule or lead anybody. They are not interested in growing this country for Nigeria. They are not. You saw what we already did after eight years. Eh? After eight years, we are not moving 30 trillion naira that nobody knew where it went to. We already collected it and left. Eh? It's not a subject of work in the National Assembly. Can you imagine? And you know what? I've been doing this to call the government to make this money. Can you imagine? And I know he will never. Well, why are you saying you, you know he will never? He will never. Investigations Enter. have commenced. Enter. You can see, you can see the former CBN governor, Ebe Fiele, is being investigated. I think most names are being you know, you know, uh, uh, Please, Ebe Fiele, Ebe Fiele. <laughs> Is not the principal here. Eh? And Mekele is an errand boy to Buari. Buari said it with his own man that he collected this money. So why is it that nobody has called him? That's my question. Two number will never call Buari to come and explain what happened. All this proof and all this investigation is just for media show. It will not go anywhere. So you're saying this that so so you have been is by directed now. to investigate all of this will be put under the campus. Nobody is going to utilize it. The fact that the investigation, since after the investigation, what has happened? Please, since after the investigation, what has happened? Answer me. Did you hear anybody in court? The men, the men suffered here, Buhari. Has anybody mentioned his name anywhere? So you can see. This is somebody who told you with his own mother he collected this money. Or you come at the train. Why did you collect this money? Who authorized you to collect it? Why did you spend it on? He did not even bother to give explanation. And he's living like somewhere. Eh? And you are telling me that somebody came to buy corruption. He will not buy corruption. Do you will not buy corruption. Rather, he will cover corruption. As long as they are able to remember, you, 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 you will cover it. You, you, you are giving a certainty like you know the president personally, or you are using his anticipations to give a picture of his person. To a president of Chinubu, I know you like the back of my hand. He will not do it. Mr. Darlington.
You can never say. I said we will not. 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 We will that's your part. All right, Thank you, sir. Uh, the most you can hear is that uh, they are probing, uh, they are investigating. That is all. No one will go to court. All right. Thank you, Barrister Darlington, for taking your time to analyze most of these issues and giving us your perspective. You. All these are Barrister Darlington's perspective to the issues has been read out on the World News at 12. Once again, Barrister Darlington, happy Easter holiday to you. All right, to wrap up here again, other top stories. You heard that Tinubu's government proposes to sell three presidential jets. Bishop Kuka speaks on corruption in Nigeria. Labour Party crisis dipping as Peter Obi Damsaburi backs moves to salvage party. And People's Democratic Party attacks a Maoli led assembly for threatening to impeach Fubara. That's a wrap on the World News at 12. My name is Esther Mwachiku. Good afternoon and thank you for listening. Happy Easter holiday to you. Up next is Martyrs with the Kamijude.